the music that I uh, created is what you would probably hear back in, you know, the point of contact because it's mostly all language and very melody music mm -hmm. and everything. And uh, that's the way that that I perceived it being mm -hmm. from the people that I spoke with and met. Hello and welcome to Where the Living Room Used to Be, a podcast about Rhode Island's music scene. Hey everyone, it's James. My guest on this episode is Daryl Black Eagle Jameson from the group Eastern Medicine Singers. It's an honor and privilege to talk with him as we cover some of the differences in sounds of Native American music from across the North, South, East, and West. We also cover how his group evolved into blending both traditional and experimental music, the true emotion behind what they create, and how the core of why they started this project is still paramount so many years later. The album they made what Yonatan got, simply under the name Medicine Singers, is an absolute masterpiece. I highly recommend you give this a listen and pick it up to support them. It was definitely a lot of fun learning a bit about how this record was made here in Rhode Island and what went into it during our conversation. If you like the episode, please leave a rating or review, but more importantly, just tell a friend. That always helps. You can also follow where the living room used to be on Instagram, as I'll be posting some photos from Black Eagle's time and music there over the coming weeks. Thanks. From my research, you grew up in Shrewsbury, Mass. Is that correct? That is. Yeah. yeah. What was it like for you growing up there? Uh, we were the only people of color in the whole town when we moved there. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. What What brought you there then? Like, what brought your family to? Well, my father. You know, my father. Uh, he had a he had a job in Worcester. Okay. And um, he was actually he was the general foreman for this big uh, machine company in Worcester. Yep. And uh, you know he wanted all his kids in a in a nice house. Yeah. Okay. And so we moved out there to the to uh, Shrewsbury in the suburbs. Yeah. It was really country back then. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was it would surrounded us. I mean, yeah, great town. I grew know. up in Dudley, Massachusetts. Oh yeah, so. yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, it was very uh, like literally a farm town. Uh, yeah, you know, my high school mascot was the Rams because it was, a, you know, a shepherd, you know, Shepherd Hill Rams. And yeah, yeah, really a, a hill. Yeah, we played them actually. Yeah, okay, in football, because exactly. uh, I went to I went from Shrewsbury. I went to Worcester Boys Trade for one year. Oh, okay. So I played on the football team, and we played all we played all those teams. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, Lemonster and St. Peter's. Yeah, and, exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, though. I mean, tremendous. I had a tremendous, you know, growing up period mm -hmm. in Shrewsbury. A lot of friends. I mean, yeah, we had fights because, you know, people didn't really understand this other culture at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking 1966. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, the civil rights and everything was going on. So my father was kind of a pioneer and. Really? Going out there mm -hmm. and living in that community. Yeah. But, I mean, I made some great friends, and we're still friends, mm -hmm. you know, like it's 50 amazing, years yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. We still hang out and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, but my life, it was really, uh, I was an outdoorsman. Okay. You know, fishing, hunting, fly tying, mm -hmm. you know, boats and, you know, traveling all over, like, central New England. Mm -hmm. You know, looking for the biggest trout, mm -hmm. <laughs> looking for bears because there weren't any back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and there wasn't that many deer either. But <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's when Shrewsbury you could hunt in Shrewsbury. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And uh, we used to go skiing down the street. Wood Hill had a exactly yeah. big ski location for everybody, yeah. and so I and learned how to ski. Tubing there, I believe. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they it was a pretty cool, pretty cool place, and. Yeah. Like all through there, like where Ward Hill was, was like some of our uh, hunting grounds and some of uh, some of really good fishing. They used to, there's a brook there, it's still their hot brook. And mm -hmm. we used to catch like nice, nice brookies and cool, you know, beautiful trout in that place. So yeah, it was great, 
great growing up there. Amazing, yeah. You could walk down the street with a gun then. Yeah. You know, nobody yeah. bothered you. Yeah. You know, do that today, well. They're going to question that. You'll get a quick <laughs> trip to the prison, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you are a member of the Pocasset Poconoket tribe? Yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk about that? Can you talk about your, your experience and, and uh, just Yeah, about... yeah. So, you know, the Pocasset is part of the Poconoket Nation. The Poconoket Nation was the original nation here in New England. Mm -hmm. After King Philip's War, they used the term Wampanoag. Okay. Because Poconokets were to be shot on sight after King Philip's War. Okay. So um, we're part of the Poconokit Nation. Mm -hmm. The Pocassets are... Um, they were intermarried with um, King Philip, Massasoit. Uh, Wam Sutter was married to Wiedemo. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in fact, he actually left a deed in Woonsocket for his people. And he's actually my, you know, he's one of my fans, you know, family members and wow, stuff. Okay. So, um, there's some historical content there. Yeah. Um, that's not why I moved there, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, there's some historical content there for my family, but you know, all of, you know, uh, parts of, uh, Massachusetts and Rhode Island mm -hmm. were under that, you know, that jurisdiction of the Poconokets. And because the Pocassets were so close to them, mm -hmm. you know, we all intermingled and intermarried. Massasoit himself, Osamequin, is my 11th generation grandfather. Oh, wow. Okay. So I come down from that line. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the vice chairman of the tribe. I have mm -hmm. been for 22 years. Mm hmm. So I actually do a lot of stuff for the tribe, mm -hmm. you know, uh, getting older, I'm going to stand down and let some younger guys yeah. take over. It's time for me to take a break and that's great. Yeah. You know, just focus on the things that I have the energy for at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I mean, um, so yeah, a lot of, you know, why we're meeting today is to, you know, we're going to cover a lot of things, but. Your group, Eastern Medicine Singers, yes. um, started in 2008, and a lot of it was to uh, to you know teach youth that that culture. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, we we actually started out not being a drum group. We were just doing it. To, uh, I was running a program at the Rhode Island Indian Council called Napiwa, which stood for Narragansett, Pequot, and Wampanoag. Oh, okay. And so we had about 50 kids that we were working with and trying to bring back, you know, Eastern culture and having the mm -hmm. kids dance and everything and stuff. And it was a, it was a big program for us. You know? Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, 50 kids, that's a lot of kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to keep them all happy was yeah. a whole other, a whole other story. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love doing it, you know, mm -hmm. and I watched those kids grow up and stuff and and uh you know seeing them now is just tremendous they're still out there doing you mm -hmm. know doing what they did back then but um it was mostly was dancing and then when we we used to use cds and then we got the idea like hey you know what we need to to drum okay for these kids and try to you know, like preserve our language yeah so i had been lucky enough to be taught some of the language by uh, an elder named Clinton Wixon. Okay. And uh, he lived out in uh, Middleborough. And he was as staunch as an Indian with his culture and preservation as you would ever dream for. He was a great guy. Mm -hmm. And so he taught, uh, he taught myself and another individual on my tribe, uh, Dave Littletree. Uh, we were like brothers and uh, taught us a language, how to pronounce things and how to say okay. things. I'm by no means a fluent speaker. Okay. But I had a lot of references from mm -hmm. him. Uh, he, he passed uh, back in 2003. And uh, he had introduced me to another gentleman, uh, Donald Three Bears Fisher. Mm -hmm. And Donald was also a, a fluent speaker of the language, and he was part of the Seacock Wampanoag tribe. And um, Donald, um, in his last, like, probably 10 years was helping me with some of the language in the song. Oh, okay. Uh, tremendous guy. He used to teach at the Algonquin Indian school. 
Mm -hmm. uh, he was one of the, uh, probably one of the five speakers at the time that spoke the language fluently, taught it okay. to a lot of people. So um, I think the benefit of that was is that in our language, you really have to hear how it sounds by somebody really speaking it. Okay. Because it's like you can look in the books and stuff. There's mm -hmm. some, there's quite a few books that are out on it. But when you hear it, yeah, really spoken, it sounds different. So it's, I think that I was fortunate enough to have that before both of those guys, yeah, passed. You know, um, and I give those guys a lot of credit. Oh, that's know, phenomenal. Yeah, for keeping keeping it alive. There were some other guys, a uh, Nipmuc guy named Chief. Spotted Eagle, they all used to hang around. Another Nipmuc name, uh, Little Crow, he passed as well. Mm -hmm. Great guy, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, learning from those guys and mm -hmm. hearing them talk was like an honor for me. Yeah. You know. And this is the, what language, or, uh, I mean. So this is, this Alcohol language or is, or is it, um, uh, what you call. It's called a Massachusetts dialect. Massachusetts, okay. Yeah, and the Massachusetts dialect actually, um, it's all very interspoken, like Wampanoag, okay. Narragansett. Um, they're all very close because they're all Algonquin dialects. Yeah, okay. The Massachusetts dialect was preserved by the Natick Praying Indians. They actually uh, translated, the, it's called the Natick Bible, with um, uh, Eliot. Okay. And so that is one of the last things that was left. So that Massachusetts dialect is still around because mm -hmm. of that Bible that they could take the words out and translate. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, other people uh, had worked on it too. Um, good friend of mine, Julianne Jennings, she was actually an uh, adjunct professor at Rhode Island College. Okay. And she created a book with the language in it. Um, and she was a good friend of mine, and she actually taught me quite a bit. And she had written some songs. She's actually a, a great music writer herself and singer. And she premiered in a movie called The uh, Pequot Massacre back in, my God, it was like probably in 1990s. Okay. And so some of that music that she preserved, she gave me permission to sing it, which I sing some of her songs you know, when we're doing traditional stuff. Yeah. When we open, we always open with a prayer. Mm -hmm. Even when we're playing with other people, it's always a prayer, you know, to mm -hmm. the creator, thanking him for letting us use the drum. Mm -hmm. And so those people really are a credit to what yeah. I'm doing now. And so my thing was is I wanted to preserve it. Yeah. And, you know, the best way to preserve anything is by music because people listen to it. Mm-hmm. And it's a repetitious, you hear it, yep. you hear it, and then the next thing you know, you're picking up the words yourself. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and, well, it's been tremendous what you've done, and we're going to touch on it, but, you know, starting from that, you know, teaching 50 kids, which is a huge task, but yeah. to, uh, you know, incorporating the drum, performing at powwows to, um, you know, again, we'll talk about touring the world and having this international acclaim. It must just be you know, a wonderful thing for the, you know, the authentic, you know, reason why you started this, but then just seeing people from around the world, um, listen to what you're, what you're speaking and, and, you know, the, the culture that you're preserving with this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I loved it. And I mean, yeah. it was never meant to happen that way. It was yeah, just, no, it's, 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 it was just a kind of a freak thing for us. You know, I yeah. mean, we were, you know, playing at like different powwows, like Eastern powwows and things. Yeah. A lot of stuff up north, because a lot of the those tribes up north are still doing the traditional. Yeah. Okay. The mu traditional music. Um, so we were doing a, a a big round up in New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, Maine, and stuff. Okay. That was where a lot of our, our uh, powwows were that we were going. And could to. you actually, I guess, talk a little bit of the difference between that, because. Um, you know, from what I've researched, you do like an Eastern style of the yeah. powwow drum, um, but like Black Lodge singers do like a Northern style. Right. Um, so what is the difference between that? Is it, so is it's it the a, dialect the, or is there like... Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's 500 nations, over 500 yeah, yeah, nations, so every one of them has a different dialect. Yeah, okay. You know, um, some is based in Algonquin. Sometimes I'll hear something from another tribe like Lakota. 
sometimes the words are very similar, not mm-hmm. the same, but very similar. Okay, yeah. You know, um, and so the difference is, is that like, it, it depends on where people live. So like they live in the prairies, their music is much different than ours. It's, um, it's a much higher pitch than ours. Oh, okay. Like if you listen to it, especially today, back then it was a little bit different. Yeah. But if you listen to it today, a lot of it is really like, you know, chants and some language put into it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a higher type of singing than, than what we yeah, do Yeah, okay. And they originated that big powwow drum. The, the people, Out west. The, the, okay, yeah. Yeah, the people out west, they originated that big powwow drum. Um, and then Southern, um, the Southern style is, co- is kind of closer to ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a more lower toned, um, different beat, a little bit different beat than our style, but the singing is very, you know, melody and okay. stuff. Um, I mean, I love, I like it all, Yeah, yeah. you know, um, Southern is like, you know, the Southern, the desert, you know, Southern desert and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, down there and, um. A lot of times you'll see a, quite a, a lot of guys around those drums, you know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you might see 10, 10 guys on a drum or more sometimes on, you know, southern and a lot of them, too, on the northern drums. Yeah. And so it's different. It's a, it's like a, the southern is like a lower guttural, you know, uh, okay. level like ours type. Um, yeah. Similar to eastern, you yeah. know. And then the eastern... Uh, you know, the woodlands, eastern woodlands, I mean, we sang all along the east coast. Uh, you go down to, like, some of the, not deep south, but, you know, the, the tribes that are down south, like, um, for instance, uh, you know, the Cherokees and stuff. Mm-hmm. And along that sea coast, um, they sang, you know, similar to us. Okay. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the tribes, you know, are Algonquin. Algonquin goes all the way from... You know, from down in Canada or down to here, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Uh, and then you have your different bases, like, you know, uh, up in Vermont and everything. In New Hampshire, you get your your Wabanaki Confederation, you mm-hmm. know, Penobscots, Passamaquoddies, uh, Abenakis, mm-hmm. and stuff. But, you know, they're still our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Because we're all from that line, you know, people mm-hmm. of the, the Eastern Gate. Mm-hmm. And so our music, um, the music that I uh, created, is what you would probably hear back in, you know, the point of contact, because it's mostly all language and very melody music mm-hmm. and everything. And uh, that's the way that, that I perceived it being mm-hmm. from the people that I spoke with and met and yep. everything. And then listening to uh, some of the other drum groups that were around back when I was younger, uh, like the uh, uh, Nipmuc Turtle Drum, for one, um, they sang in the language, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, some of the guys are still around. We sing uh, some of their songs as well because mm-hmm. they're good. You know, they're old traditional songs and stuff. So, you know, basing that type of music on what we're doing now, mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of how we, how I perceived it when I wrote it. <laughs> Eastern medicine singers, it, you know, bridges the traditional and some of the, you know, future as well. Can I guess you talk a little bit more about the music that 
that you create and like how you're balancing that and you know even how some of these things are I, I know you mentioned how some of the 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 languages passed down but like how is the the music um yeah uh, so right I down mean, like is it something that you're you're translate like um you know adapting that in some way or is it like um you, you know, mean like um like how i'm converting it to the to, to, to yeah to what you're doing now you yeah know, like um so yeah. that's a re really strange thing is that um it almost like vibe together for me you okay know? um like being being on the drum the drum is like the heartbeat of everything. Yeah. And so I could actually, I don't know, I have this like ability to like hear music in the background. Oh, okay. It, when I'm like doing stuff. So it's like, I kind of know what I'd like to have in there. And, yeah. you know, when I met Yonatan, Yonatan, uh, the first time we ever played, mm -hmm. uh, we were playing the traditional th uh, gig down at South by Southwest. Yeah, okay. And so when we met him and he, he was watching us for like the day, there was a lot of people, but, mm -hmm. and, uh, I was like, who is this guy? He, he yeah. keeps coming back, you know? And then finally he approached, uh, one of my drummers and, and asked if we would play with him. And he came to me and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what does he play? Right. He's like, oh, it's rock and roll, you know? Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm, I've, I've done other stuff, but not really. Yeah rock and roll you know and so I mean, from what i heard though like going back that was kind of what you listened to you listened to like a lot of skinner and oh yeah i mean Leonard and skinner and, and, yeah <laughs> you I know mean, so you're down for that Creed stuff but you know, like... water revive all that <laughs> yeah. you know all that like yeah you know that that southern type of rock and stuff i i really like led zeppelin and yeah yeah of course you know um but like having that kind of sound with, with yeah so that kind of sound is again. like you know i don't know if you ever watched that uh the documentary Indians that Rock the World. I haven't, no, no. Okay. You, you really need to watch cool. it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And the guy who, who st first song that started in it was uh, Link Ray. Okay. Rumble. Yeah, okay, yeah. And so when we met him down there, we I finally decided, okay, we're going to do this because I've done other collaborations before. Yeah. So, so we went in and we, and we performed. And... Uh, we were doing this one song, and he, like, mimicked it with his guitar. And I'm like, I looked at it, and I go, this guy's good. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we had never played together. Yeah. And he started playing and everything, and I was like, yeah, that was pretty cool. We did the song, and I was kind of looking at people, and I'm like, I don't know if they liked it or not. Because it looked like there were some tears in some people's eyes. So I was like, pick up the drum, and let's go. We'll go out and back to our, and play the rest, rest of our music. and. Mm -hmm. He came running out and he's like, man, they love you. You got to come back, you mm -hmm. know? So we went back in and we finished the set with them and stuff. And, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. I mean, mm -hmm. people were like coming up to us and like, wow, I never seen that before, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so we got one of the, like the best new acts at uh, South by Southwest that year. And, yeah. And he was like, you know, we need to like do something together. This was like what year? 2000? That was 2016. 17, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I think it was 20, either 20, yeah, 2017. Yeah. yeah, okay. And so the we kind of like kept in touch. Yeah. And we decided we were going to do a video, mm -hmm. a music video of like a collaboration of different music that we had. And we did the video, a friend of mine um, up in Vermont, because remember, we didn't have any snow for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I called her up and I said, I said, listen, uh, I said, do you, uh, you have any snow up there? <laughs> and she's yeah. like, yeah, we got, we, there's a couple places with some good snow. So we shot up there. Yeah. Okay. We were up in, uh, it looks like yeah. you're like in the middle of a lake though. Is that? Well, on the side it? there was water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other story. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. So we got up there and it was like supposed to be like the, uh, director wanted just like to find snow coming down. It was supposed to be a little bit of flurries and everything well we got there it was 28 degrees and the snow started coming down like you would not believe yeah and we were out there in regular regalia yeah. nothing yeah freezing okay, yeah. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and we filmed this thing yeah and uh uh the, the uh film director was Gigi ben artis who's a famous uh israeli film director okay. he travels all over the world great guy 
cool. And we filmed this thing, and it was like, it was a masterpiece. We went through a lot to do it, mm-hmm. but he did a, a beautiful job, and that was like the kickoff. Yeah, okay. That was the kickoff for everything, because once that video hit, with that music and everything, people were calling. And that yeah. that year, uh, we did a short tour here in New England. We were in Philly. Uh, we played D.C. to Black Cat. Oh, cool. That's great. Yeah, really go. Oh, yeah, really great venue. I had a blast there, you yeah. know. And then um, in the fall, we went to go play Desert Days in California. What's that? Um, so Desert Days is a big, a big rock and roll. Like oh, okay. San Bernardino Valley, thousands of people. Yeah. And uh, we were up on the stage, and Yonatan told the the uh, <laughs> the stage people, he says, "We want to be down there on the dirt, so people can surround us." Yeah. They were pissed. <laughs> oh, like the sound engineer. Yeah, oh my like, god! I thought yeah. they were gonna kill him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it, you know, it turned out to be a great show. And then after the show. Somebody came over to us and they're like, yeah, um, some people want to interview you over there and talk to you guys and stuff. Mm-hmm. And turned out it was a Rolling Stone. Yeah. So they did like an online article about us and everything. And, you know, I got a big charge out of that. The Rolling Stone was like, I was like, you know, this yeah. is it's a big deal. Yeah, you know? of course. And then, you know, we took off after that. Tw- 20, that was 2018, 2019. We did we did quite a few tours mm-hmm. you know we had gone to and this is under the name medicine singers as well yeah. right yeah yeah but at that time we were still like eastern medicine singers in yonatan gap i got you okay yeah and then we changed we changed it later when we did the album and everything okay but yeah and so because everybody knew yonatan and everybody knew us so it yeah. was like you know it was kind of like a fresh new yes. fresh thing yeah. and yeah. stuff so i mean we had a great time we did uh we did a show in Amsterdam, um, yeah. outside Amsterdam. That was a tremendous show. Uh, then we went to Metz, France. Wow. Played there. Uh, cut through Belgium and everything. We went through Calais. We took the the channel underground, and we went to London. Yeah. And uh, we played uh, Club Odo in London. That was a great, yeah. great venue. And then, you know, we went home after that. But, I mean, it was a great trip. Yeah, yeah, like know. the response to that. Yeah, was... yeah, we had a great response after that. And then we started playing, you know, I mean, we started playing in uh, in Canada and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did the, um, what's the name of that, uh, Vancouver uh, oh, okay. Jazz Festival. Yeah. Yeah, that was smoking. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was smoking. <laughs> yeah. And we had, we had that's when we did a East Coast, uh, West Coast tour. Mm-hmm. We played in um, L.A. and we played in... Um, Haystack, California, which I don't even remember where it was. Yeah. It was somewhere in the mountains. And the it name was like, suits itself. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like, I thought I was going to Beverly Hillbillies, yeah. you know, country or something, you know. Like, Black Eagle, we're going to Haystack, California. You're like, okay, what? <laughs> and, you know, it was a small venue. We, yeah. we played there, and then they, they're like, oh, by the way, uh, you know, uh, you guys got to hurry up and get back to your rooms because... They shut out the they shut off the electricity at night. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> no electricity? <laughs> I'm like, you better get me a generator. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ended up getting a generator because I had sleep apnea. So oh, you, yeah, I got you. Yeah, and so uh, they got me a generator. I mean, it was beautiful. The bears in the mountains. Wow. You know, I, I mean, it was it was remote. Yeah. And then from there we went to you know, to Vancouver and stuff mm-hmm. and played there. So, uh, you know, great, great year. 2019 was a great year. Then we went across, uh, came back and went across Canada. We were, we played in Toronto. Uh, we played the RBC, uh, Royal okay. Jazz. Yeah. Blues. Yeah. That was huge. Yeah. We opened for, um, oh my God, I can't think of the guy's name. He's a famous rapper, uh, Logic. Oh, really? Yeah. Had no idea. And I mean, we were going there. We were supposed to play a smaller venue. Yeah. But I guess, like, you know, we had been getting a lot of, yeah, you know, drag at, during the time we were in Canada and stuff. And we got there and they're like, you guys are playing the main stage. Uh, we'll take you to your dressing room. And we had this, they had this big trailer for us and stuff. And we were with a bunch of other natives. Um, uh, Cody Coyote, who's a famous rapper up there yeah. in, uh, Canada and there was a couple other guys I wasn't familiar with. We were all 
hanging out. We had like a courtyard. We were all sitting out there having, you know, drinking and, yeah. you know, go, we went over to dinner. They had, uh, they had flown in uh, smoked halibut for us. There you I'm go. Living large, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, it, you know, it was a tremendous trip and getting yeah. to meet all those guys up there. And, uh, you know, then we, we traveled, we went to, we did Toronto that year. Mm-hmm. And then we did uh, we did a show in uh, Montreal as well. Yeah. And that was, that was a great, it was a great show. I had a great time. Um, so cool to hear. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then COVID. Yeah. Boom. So like 2020, 21 yeah. was like ruined, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we got back up fighting and we got that, got that album out. Yeah. So with the album, uh, that, that is under the name Madison Singers, uh, that was released in 2022, correct? Yeah. July, July 2022. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it's uh, the collaboration with Jonathan God, who's an Israeli guitarist, um, but it has some you know, some big names on it. Thor Harris from Swans was on it. Um, I got to actually play a show with them. I forgot what band it was with, but uh, it was at AS220. And uh, just a phenomenal person. Very memorable, like, meeting. Oh, yeah, Thor. yeah. He's, he's, a great, he's a great guy, man. Like, you know, yeah. uh, kind of has that uh, that name surrounded by Thor. But yeah, he's uh, like, well, that was me. I'm he's like, like the most oh, gent- he's like yeah. the most gentle person. I remember that. He know? is, yeah. he is, you know. And, uh, like, I mean, we were at his house when we were in... Uh, when we were in Austin, yeah, you know, hanging out with him and his and his girl and everything, and like, yeah, I mean, phenomenal people. Yeah, I mean, we met some. I mean, great, great musicians. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, Jamie Branch is on the record as well, which is a contemporary like avant garde jazz. Yeah, um, you know, trumpeter and she uh, was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's sad uh, that she yeah she passed. Right. She passed right after we released the album. Yeah, you know what I mean, and like. She was memorable on Sunset. That oh, opening, yep. yeah, to Sunset was just like, you know, amazing. And Jonathan, you know, he's like a great choreographer. Mm-hmm. And he he put that thing together, and when he played it, when he played it for me, I was like, man, this is it. Mm-hmm. You know, this this is going to be a really good album. Yeah, and that was done at Machines with Magnets. Yeah, with Seth Manchester. All local stuff, man. You know, talk it. Yeah, so yeah. can you talk a little bit more about that recording process? Yeah, I mean, uh, we were like yeah. recording during like the times that we were playing and everything and in between and we'd go hang out. Um, Seth, who runs Machines with Magnets, great guy. Yeah. You awesome. know, yeah. we're all hanging out. <laughs> you yeah. know, it was like a big body. Yeah. You know, and some of the guys would come and you know, we'd record and, you know, we'd, he'd come up again and we'd, we'd do some more work. I did a lot of work with yeah. him, you know. Or like, were you bringing the songs? Like, were you bringing, like, the, the core of them and then Jonathan and the, and the other players were, were adding we actually, to it? Or were you writing collaboratively with, with things? Or, like, how was that? that so, like, it, Jonathan liked my song so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? That we kind of, like, uh, collaborated with it together. So it was yeah. like... Um, we had played some of them already together. Okay. Yep. Turned and so time, we like just re- like past, really yeah. refined them. I mean, one of my favorites was Daybreak, you yeah. know, because Daybreak, uh, when we released it, we wanted to put the language up there. Oh, okay. So we had tech, we had, you know, we had the hybrid text, yep. you know, up on, on the video when we released it and everything. And that was like the big thing of like preservation yes, of exactly. language and, Actually, the voice, the, the, you hear a voice on here, the names and the language of this female. She was actually the daughter of one of the most uh, recent chiefs that passed away, uh, Leroy Osamequin Perry, mm-hmm. of my tribe. And that was his daughter. He continued and carried the language on. This mm-hmm. man spoke nine languages. Wow. Okay. And he was the chief. Not only the Pacassets, but the entire Wampanoag Nation. Okay. Wow. Yeah, he was uh, like a legendary guy. So it was like fitting that we put some words from his daughter who was carrying that on, mm-hmm. on that song. Yeah. You know? And then the text so that people could see it mm-hmm. and know that that language is still there. Mm-hmm. And so it was one of my favorites. And uh, the gentleman I told you about, Donald Three Bears Fisher, um, he helped me with that and 
till I got it perfect. He wouldn't let us. He wouldn't let me sing it. You know. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Because it was it was going to be a traditional song. Yeah. And so um, it was. It was a day. It's it's actually the real name of it is called the uh, Nakanatuk, which okay. which is the daybreak ceremony. Yeah. When you greet the sun in the morning, you're thanking the Creator for another day in life. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's where it comes up first in the east. So it's yeah. at the eastern gate, you know. Yep. So our tribal lands were in Timberton originally, all the way down to Middleborough, almost to Middleborough. So that's would be the first light, mm-hmm. and that's what that means. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, when I wrote that, I, I always said this is one of my like favorite best songs because it means a lot, but it's it, it's a medicine song really, mm-hmm. but. When we did it with Jonathan, it was beautiful. And I had to approach him and ask him how he liked it. And Jonathan drove from New York to meet Three Bears and to get his approval. Oh, okay. And he played the guitar with us and everything. Yeah. Uh, we did this at Mount Hope Community Center. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so uh, we played it. He sat there and he thought about it for a minute and he says, I used to play the guitar and I like it. You can play it. And wow. so that's, yeah, that song has a lot of meaning. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like... <laughs> yeah. And then the other ones, you know, all great songs. We had mm-hmm. a collaboration, um, the Hawk song that mm-hmm. was written by Ray Two Hawks. Yep. And um, Sunset was an old song. That we um, we don't even know how old it is. Okay. That's an old one. That's an ancient song. Yeah. And then um, Rumble. Well, that was the big thing. Rumble was really cool. Yeah. And I liked it. We were we because he Jonathan said to me, he "Goes, you got to watch this this documentary." Yeah. So I watched the documentary, and I'm like, "Yeah, I remember that song." Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. He goes, we could do something with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so we did. And he was like, what do you think? What kind of song? I go, a double beat. Yeah. You know? And so we did the double beat, and we sang this old Algonquin round dance song. And that's what you hear. yo we hi yo we hi And that was the basis mm-hmm. for that song. It was like... Uh, it was like a song to give everybody some pump, yeah. you know, and it does. Yes, <laughs> that's a powerful song. It Every, is. Yeah. Everybody loves that song, you know. So, and of course, you know, it was a Link Ray song. So mm-hmm. when we produced it, of course, we have to pay his estate. Yeah, you know, for the rights to sing that song, but mm-hmm. that's all right. Yeah, because it was a bad song, and the video. I, I'm sure you saw that video. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was my cousin Dean. He's from the Narragansett Indian tribe. And uh, did a great job with that. Yeah, yeah. And that was that. That was uh, the producer G, uh, Gigi Benatis from Israel. Oh, okay. He they did that. Well. He did that film, and he had another gentleman with him. I mean, we, we must have like had fifty thousand dollars worth of lights, and we filmed <laughs> this up in I think it was Woodstock, New York, in this church. Okay. Yeah, really cool place, you know, and. Uh, I mean, just my son came with me. My son was helping the guys with makeup and everything and oh, dress. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because my son's a great dancer. Mm-hmm. He's he's a great Eastern dancer. He learned, you know, he learned from me. Learned from uh, Michael Michael Bliss, who's a Narragansett Indian, great guy. He used to run a program at the Indian Council as well. Okay. And so, you know, he watched him, and uh, he turned out to be great. Yeah. yeah, great Dan. He doesn't dance anymore, but he, you know. Oh no, okay. not much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they grow up. Yeah. He'll come back to him though. Yeah, I, mean, I hope so. I mean, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, incredible journey, man. I, yeah. You know, and the, the way that it all went down, like I said, we 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 weren't even asking for it. It just happened. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it's a phenomenal album um and yeah just like a different take on 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 what you what you do you know so um 
yeah, I definitely recommend anyone that's listening to go and find that and, and buy it. Um, I don't know. Is there, is the vinyl still available or is yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Still okay. Available, so it's on yeah. vinyl, um, or you can, you know, uh, find it on streaming. It's available through, uh, stone tapes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, an awesome, awesome record. But even kind of backtracking, I'm a drummer. I'm just kind of interested to talk a little bit more about your drum as well. Can you, uh, you know, you mentioned incorporating that uh, many years ago, but um, yeah, can you just talk about the drum itself and, and what it yeah, means? Yeah, yeah, I mean. Um, even like I'm kind of interested in like the the, the quote unquote nuts and bolts of it, like how is it constructed and. and um, we have three drums. Okay. Uh, um and the one that we travel with is a very small, um, it's almost, it's like a northern type small drum okay. uh, with buffalo on it and a lot of, a lot of sound. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. stretched over, you know, the cedar and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going afar because, you know, you don't want that big drum with you when yeah, you go you have... <laughs> overseas, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to carry it. So yeah. we'll take that drum. That drum's like uh 20, about. 24 inches. 24, okay, yeah. Yeah, great sound, yeah. you know. Um, it was made by a local guy here. Um, uh, Kevin Rue is his name. And okay. And he makes drums. Uh, he, he was down in Fall River at the time. And then the very first drum that we had was made by a guy who was uh, Mohegan. And we met him up at a powwow in Charles Chalamont. Shalomont Mass. Okay. And uh, we got this drum from him. He made it with moose hide and cedar wow. strips. Yeah. Yeah, it's, really. Like you would need a uh, giant animal for... Yeah, you, yeah, <laughs> you need a big animal because that, that drum's probably like this, 30, maybe 36 inches. Wow. And so that was our beginning drum that we mm -hmm. used, and that drum is loud. Yeah. It's powerful, you know? Yeah. And like... If we're around here and we really want, you know, the drum, the pounded, we'll take that, we'll take that drum with mm -hmm. us, you know, uh, powwows and stuff. We took that drum. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the, the sound is amazing yeah. with that drum, the resonation of it and stuff. And then of course we mic the drum too. Yeah. So when we mic that drum, I mean, you literally can feel the can vibrations feel yeah, going yeah. through <laughs> your body. Like I can remember when we were in Vancouver, we had that drum. Oh, okay. We had that drum in Vancouver, and like when we played, there were like kids and people that were sitting down because our stage was up, yeah. and they were sitting down here. They mic'd that drum up so good that the whole ground was vibrating when we were playing. People were just going sick, like, <laughs> wow, this is crazy. And we're loud singing. Yeah. You know, we're all mic'd up too. So, yeah. you know, it was like tremendous. It was, you could feel you know the power of that drum it's 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 really different than just playing a regular yeah you know percussion right. drum and stuff exactly yeah. you, you know you get the small stick and you go and i mean not that i love it but when you play that drum with one hand and you feel that thing resonating through your arm you feel That's special yeah. yeah yeah you feel you feel the warrior spirit yeah in you yeah and you know then we have the big drum that's 40 inches 
Wow. We gotta so that other one is not even the big drum. No, yeah. <laughs> no. And we got to re, we got to re, uh, we got to reskin that one this yeah, year. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, skins get worn out. We have to keep them, you know, from drying out. We'll put bear grease on them, or okay, you know, we'll put shea butter just a small amount when we rub it in, mm -hmm. so that you know it breathes and it's still like loose. We don't want it to be so tight that it's gonna tear. Oh, like snap! Yeah, yeah. Um, and that one, yeah, that's loud. <laughs> it's like a deep yeah yeah i love playing that one yeah you know and then our big drum that we haven't skinned yet that drum stands as tall as me so that bigger drum is not even your biggest no. <laughs> this is the fourth drum we got yeah we got we got to put a, a the only thing you can put on that is probably either buffalo or you know moose yeah because it's huge yeah it's wow. like it's like five feet across. <laughs> <laughs> it literally has to be in a buy. I have it in our storage. Facility. And what is the the shell made out of? Cedar. Cedar. Okay. Yeah. Are they all cedar? Is yeah, that... they're all cedar. Okay. And is yeah. there a reason for that? Or yeah. Is it just so, like... Well, cedar is medicine for us. Anyways. I got gotcha. you. Okay. That's one of the four medicines. Yep. And so cedar also, the bugs don't like it. They won't eat it. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it smells good. <laughs> yeah there's a yeah there's an answer yeah yeah, yeah right <laughs> but you know the drum and, and you know a lot of people don't understand the women don't play on the drum with us in our culture okay because i've of, seen them perform though like they can be in the back they have yeah uh, right more of like yeah. like shaker type, S some uh, tribes do know. they do okay. play you yeah. know they do play on the big drum but here they don't you know yeah and so um the reason for that is because uh, back in the day, the grandmothers got together because a woman has two heartbeats, her own and her child. The man only has one. So to keep it in perfect balance, they gave them the drum. Okay. So now the men have the heartbeat of the drum and their own, and the women have their heartbeat and their child. So everything's balanced. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see it. But most, of, most, you know, the Western tribes and stuff, the women don't play on the drums. Mm -hmm. You don't see it much. Sometimes up north, sometimes they do. It depends on the tribe, you mm -hmm. know. Um, around here, they don't. Okay. You know. And it's uh, kind of like an unwritten law, you know. Yeah. Drum etiquette. Yeah. But the women play the hand drums. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not that they can't sing, they just play the hand drums. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the story behind that. Yeah. And do you remember your first time performing at a powwow? Yeah, I do, because we weren't supposed to go and play at this powwow. And it was actually my tribe. It was a winter inside powwow and the drum, uh one of the drums that they were supposed to have couldn't make it. Oh, okay. And they asked us to come down and play. Yeah. We really weren't ready. You know, but we went and played anyways, you know, and uh, we had a great time, you know. Yeah. And we sprang some songs that nobody had heard. Oh, really? Like, is there even within that, like, a certain, um, like, catalog of Yeah, like, of we songs, had, uh, so you know, say? I had written some of our own, you know, some early songs mm -hmm. in the beginning, but we sang, you know, traditional songs mostly back then. Yeah. And uh, so when I dropped a couple of our own, nobody had ever heard them. Before, yeah, okay. But they were dancing. So <laughs> yeah, we had a great time. Yeah, you know? I don't think I'll ever forget that day. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it was like resonating through me, and yeah, it still does every time I play. You yeah, know? you get a happy feeling from from playing and watching people enjoy it. You know, and you know now we've elevated to like teaching. And, yeah go into, you know, uh, educational places, like, and we play at Mystic Seaport and things mm -hmm. like that, some of the schools. In fact, next next week we're going to school in Portsmouth to play, mm -hmm. you know, for the kids and stuff. So it's a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about the difference of your experience playing a powwow versus these stages? Shows. You know, like, yeah, exactly. Just, uh, you know, that there's... Yeah, I you mean... Know, a difference between that. Uh, yeah, there certainly is. I mean, the powwow, you know, it's usually not just us. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be two, three, four drums. So, you know, we're playing a song and we we get to take a break and, 
you know, go and maybe socialize or even go out and dance to okay. another drum's music and stuff. And so, you know, it's a lot different. But, yeah. you know, there's people in a circle dancing to our music. So that's the kind of the difference. Our people are out there dancing. So, if mm -hmm. it, you know, it feels good, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, you know, then you go to a stage, it's totally different. You know, it's a whole different atmosphere and people are like waiting yeah you know to hear like oh, wow what are these guys gonna do are they gonna, are they gonna do something crazy i mean like <laughs> a lot of times we'll come out you know for the ambiance and we'll put war paint on mm -hmm. you know and it just kind of like adds to the show yeah and stuff and so like last last year uh newport folk festival we played with yonatan and we had uh Lee Ronaldo from Sonic Youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we brought out two of the guys uh, and we did what's called a warrior standoff where they're actually blow to blow with tomahawks, but like a coup, not striking each other. Yeah. And we brought that to the stage at Newport Folk Rest with Yonatan. He didn't even know because it was my baby, you know? Okay. And uh, it was insane. <laughs> he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> He was, I told him, I go, you, when we got up on the stage, I go, this is what's going to go down. He's like, I love it, Chief. That's, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It mm -hmm. was good. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got uh, my partner, Brittany, he was not here today. She um, she filmed a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So we got some nice promo shots yeah. of, yeah. And uh, I, I guess we, we must have done good because we're going to play there again yeah, this year. Say, yeah, you're playing this year. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's like, you know, Newport Folk Fest is legendary. Mm -hmm. All Absolutely. the people that are, that are playing there and everything. I mean, James Taylor, Dolly mm -hmm. Parton, I mean, all these people that are like, you know, great icons for mm -hmm. musicians. I just feel honored to be there, you know. And the only Native player that's ever played, you know, mm -hmm. traditional, you know. Yeah. No, it's really special what you're yeah what you're doing and just you know what you're able to expose that audience to um and they never know what they're gonna get that's the yeah thing. no exactly <laughs> exactly like there's a lot of stuff out there and it's, yeah you continue to evolve and uh you know seeing these other earlier performances be like oh i can kind of get it but then uh yeah we do something yeah, new exactly yeah know? i mean we had dances one time we were in philly they were standing on speakers dancing and warriors oh, wow and, okay yeah it was crazy you know yeah all lit up they all had you know war paint on and everything we did it at the black hat too oh yeah 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 it was that was a that was a sick show <laughs> <laughs> no that's great um yeah, the you know what you're creating is incredibly emotional. Uh, I mean, I know from my own personal experience, I've been extremely fortunate to see Eastern Medicine singers perform live. Um, you know, one of them was at at the Zap celebration, which is uh, you know celebration of the the cleaning of the Blackstone River. Um, so you know, it was important to have you performing alongside of that. But it is like watching watching your group and that the 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 drums that are coming through like just the, the performance the the like it, it it cuts through so much um that it's yeah it's an incredible thing that you know anyone that's listening that hasn't had a chance to see eastern medicine singers like please do like it um thank you you know uh, but you know one thing that i do want to bring up you know, with regards to that emotional piece, you know, you did a, a performance, you went out to KEXP, yeah. um, and for the song, Honor Song, uh, which is a song of healing, uh, you know, Red Medicine, a yeah. member of your group, was introducing that song and talking about his wife being in the hospital at the time, and I mean, it is um, something to watch and something to, to experience, even through a screen, <laughs> It yeah. was powerful. Um, so I guess I just would like to hear you talk a little bit more about uh, about those types of performances and about that yeah. um, 
you know, the, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the, the, like the emotional piece of it, but just the kind of, you know, to me, that can be that healing thing that can be that you pulls people together. There's some, you know, so I'd love to, I guess, just hear your perspective on it and what it means to you of not only just, I mean, it's so layered of your keeping this language alive, you're sharing this culture with people, but just having that experience of someone that um, isn't familiar with uh, your culture that, that you know, yeah. in depth, you know, but just to ha- like it, it, it touches me, it touches so many people, like what you were saying at that performance in, at South by Southwest that, you know, yeah. uh, um, you know, what it does for, for Jonathan, a person from, from Israel, you know, like it, with that, how, how this all kind of connects, you know, so I'd love to just kind of hear you talk a little bit more about like that, the the core kind of emotion behind yeah, this, those. what it feels like to be the person that's creating that for folks, you know? Those songs are like medicine songs. And mm-hmm. um, Red Medicine, I wanted him to kind of showcase himself. Mm-hmm. Um, if you notice in KAXP, I wasn't singing. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a song that he developed, and um, his his wife later passed, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so um, when we were there... It was an emotional thing for him. Mm-hmm. He got, you know, he, he got there and everything. And when we got back, she passed away. Wow. And stuff. So and, sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, it was sad. It was very sad. And she was a member of our group, too, for a long, long time. And so mm-hmm. she just couldn't travel anymore, mm-hmm. you know. And um, that song, you know, will bring a tear to your eye. Yeah. You know, that honest song. And he was actually crying when he... When he did that at KEXP, mm-hmm. that was an emotional show, mm-hmm. you know. Um, we did the, uh, the 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 dance, um, the opening dance, the Calumet. Um, my cousin Dean danced that as well, and that's uh, that's a special song as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, uh, those medicine songs, and that's kind of what we're working on right now. Mm-hmm. In fact, I just sent over a new song to Jonathan, a medicine song, and um, he loved it, mm-hmm. you know, and we're going to be de- developing more of that stuff, mm-hmm. you know. We want to touch people's hearts, mm-hmm. you know, and make them feel that, you know, those emotions and those deep, it, it, a lot of this music is to get rid of your troubles, mm-hmm. you know, and to make you feel good, to uplift you, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we want people to be happy when they see a show, mm-hmm. you know, uh, because it's, it's, it's different, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it, there's like, it's like the wave of the, the singing and the drum itself. It, it lifts you from mm-hmm. your everyday problems, you know what I mean? And it's like, we're there to, to not only to perform, but we want to make people feel good. Mm-hmm. When they walk away from that show, we either want them to say, wow, those guys are crazy, or, wow, I mean, I just had a great experience. Yeah. You know, that I'm never going to forget. This is emotional. And we have those songs. Yeah. You know, and uh, we're working on more stuff like that, you know, to lift people's spirits. We've done a lot of like crazy stuff. I mean, we um, we uh, one year uh, we played at Patrick's Patrick's Pub up on Smith Street. Oh, okay, 
Yeah, yeah, the uh, Irish pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And um, we played with uh, the Irish fiddlers up there. Uh, yeah. And they used to have a, a night where they would play. I think it was yeah, Tuesday it's, nights or something. It's Thursday yeah. nights. Thursday yeah. nights with Bob Druin. Bob Druin, my yeah. good friend Bob, you yeah. know. And uh, we would go up there with the drum, mm -hmm. and we would play with the fiddlers. Oh, and, I love that. Oh, it was, cool. it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. We, and we all loved it, you know. And so uh, Patrick wanted to surprise. He had a big party. Uh, like I think it was like around Christmas. And he, he told everybody that he had some drummers coming from Dublin. Okay. We were hiding in the cellar. <laughs> he brought us up, and we were all in get And everybody was, like, looking. And he was just in his glory <laughs> as we came out there and started drumming for everybody. Yeah. And people, you know, people were, like, dancing and having a good time. And it was, like, a perfect statement of perfect cultures together. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, every year we opened up for Russell Gassetti yep. at the Blackstone River Theater. Yeah. Summer Solstice. Mm -hmm. Yes. And after we played. I know how important that was for him. For him. Like, I'm like yeah. close friends with him. And on He's the, a great guy. The Hall of Fame board. And yeah, that was always like the the, the open, staple thing. Yeah. You know, it's like and the, we'd open yeah. up, you know what yeah. I mean? And not only that, we'd go play with the guys. Mm-hmm. You know how they have their little groups and they yeah. set up and stuff, and, and then we would play at the after party mm -hmm. with all the musicians back at, at night. The Black Summer Theater. Yeah, back yeah. at the theater, and that was like uh, the highlight of our night. Yeah, that's what he always said too. Like, yeah, like, I mean like, it was the, amazing. The jam after you know? the festival mm. was always so cool um, because yeah, he was bringing in you yeah. know acclaimed award-winning artists from Ireland. And, yeah, you know. Quebec and one guy said to me, "Those I never met an Indian before, you know." So, wow, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it was sure, like yeah. a great clash of culture, and mm -hmm. you know, Russell, you know, he's a, a great friend, and it's yeah. like I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, our good friend Mary Lee Poddington passed away. Yeah, I know, and so you know, I just I, I don't even know what to say. She was such a beautiful mm -hmm. person. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss her, and mm -hmm. we played with her. You know, there was a song that she did about the the uh, labor, mm -hmm. the labor thing, her, and her and Ed Sweeney yeah. um, had composed a song together, and it was about how they were slotted, I guess, up here in Rhode Island, and she asked us to play with her and to learn this song. And so we did it together, mm -hmm. you know. And again, you know, a blending of the culture together was one of the things that we we were famous for yeah you exactly know? you're uh don't seem to be scared to try new things do no. new things uh, and I, I think it's good you know yeah and because of that we met a lot of great people mm -hmm. you know and um we played with a group that did viking music yeah yeah i did want to bring that up they were out of boston right is that uh right? new york actually new york okay uh kudu it was like, yeah, like Viking warrior music yeah. or whatever. Uh, okay. Dave Masika was in, he was the head of the group, and they had the warrior drums, they had bagpipers, I mean, yeah. just, uh, we did, and we'd released an album with them, you yeah. know, uh, Thunder of the Gods, mm -hmm. unbelievable, mm -hmm. and, you know, performing with those guys was amazing, you know, yeah. we played the biggest uh, renaissance festival in the country, which was at Annapolis in Maryland. Okay. It's like 50,000 people a day. <laughs> and it was just crazy. Yeah. You know, it was crazy. <laughs> great, great show, you know. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. And funny story, we were there, and uh, we played the end of the night. You would come out outside of the gates, and you would play, and we were all together. And this one guy kept trying to touch the drum, we told him, don't touch that drum. Mm -hmm. Don't touch that drum. And he ran in, he touched the drum, stood up, his eyes went to the back of his head, and he fell down, he was unconscious. We had to get down on him and, and like, almost resuscitate him. And then he finally, he jumped up, and he was like, man, I'll never touch that drum again. And people were scared. Because like they thought touching the drum, yeah, they different. thought the drum like n like took them out, you yeah. Know? And Sounds like it did. 
<laughs> I think he was drunk too. Oh but, yeah, but so. Uh, I mean, you know, like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just the, the what happened there was like yeah, and people were talking to us because uh, we played there two days and. Mm -hmm. People were talking to us after, like, man, I ain't never seen anything like that. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I, you know, I thought I'd add that funny story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should have listened to you. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> yeah. We all laughed about it after, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a story. Wow. Yeah. I'd love to talk about your company, uh, Black Eagle Productions, uh, just because it seems like it's another extension of, of what you're doing with Eastern Medicine Singers of, uh, at least from what I've seen, you do a lot of documentary filmmaking and you're even expanding upon that, um, but sharing the culture visually and, and doing some of these other pieces. So uh, could you talk a little bit more about what you do yeah. Um, here? Yeah. So... Um... Black Eagle Productions actually started in 2017. Okay. Um, when I was doing the PVD Fest. I, so I was a cultural curator okay. for the PVD Fest. And I needed to have like a company that I could, you know, do all the stuff with. And so I said, well, I'm, I'm you know, working with all these musicians. Why not? Mm -hmm. So I actually got a huge budget uh, from both of the mayors at the time. Uh, to have a um, stage right at City Hall. Okay. And so what I did, in 2017, I had done what was called the, the Drums and Music of the Americas in Woonsocket. Okay. And then I brought it the same year. That's when I brought it to, I think it was, was it 2000? Yeah, two, I'm sorry, 2018 I brought it to PVD. And I had like seven or eight bands mm -hmm. at uh at my stage all cultural folk music uh kenny lyon oh yeah I'm sure you're familiar with of kenny course. yeah his son uh his group uh mary lee ed sweeney um i had a gentleman um from africa that was like a phenomenal phenomenal African drama. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had, we had, we had everything. And so, yeah. you know, we played our traditional sets and everything. Uh, we had brought in an Abenaki guitarist from Vermont who did the language in, in uh, Abenaki uh, that he incorporated to his music. Just a, you know, a great show to th 2018. And then yeah. 2019 was my biggest. I mean, I did a huge show and uh, that's when I had, Jonathan step on the stage with us. We were the final act. Yeah. And uh, man, I mean, there must have been 7,000 people there. It mm -hmm. was insane. <laughs> and, you know, we blew, we blew the top off of it. And so it was like, you know, it was my chance to do like, you know, musical production and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we actually had um, made a stick for Mayor Alaza. Okay. Because he played with us and he was native. You know. Oh, okay. And uh, he he couldn't he couldn't be on the stage with us the last time that we did do the the show up there. But uh, we had designed his own stick for him, and uh, that was the beginnings mm -hmm. of what I'm doing now. And then because of my injuries, I ended up having to uh, go back to school. To mm -hmm. uh, I went to uh, New England Tech. And okay. I got a bachelor's degree in digital media productions. Yeah. And so uh, that's where I met my 
my partner, Brittany Ruggieri, uh, both her and I graduated together. And oh, okay. I said, you know, it would be kind of cool if we just, you know, share the space and saw, see what we could do together. Yeah. And uh, it actually, everything kind of fell in place in a while because my tribe was doing um, a lot of stuff with the land trust and everything. And so they they um, had me come in as a contractor to uh, produce um, like commercial commercial um, uh, promos for like oh, okay. these, this farm program we were doing. So I started doing that. Yeah. And then we evolved into doing uh, documentary mm-hmm. and stuff. And that's what I'm working on now. It's called Black and Red. Okay. And it's a vision of what it's like in New England to have both black blood and native blood. Okay. That's going to be screened at uh, Nichols College in okay. October of this year. Dudley, Massachusetts there. Yeah, Dudley, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to screen it there. But I'm also working on one that I started in a school called the New England Indians. Okay. And I should, I was hoping to finish it in March, but I just I just couldn't. It became bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Okay. And I started it in school as just as a, a trailer for one of my projects, and my teacher said, you need to finish that. Oh, okay. And so I'm working on that now. I, I was hoping to have it done by the end of this month, part, part one of it anyways. Yeah. Um, and it's a breakdown of different people that are in the culture today uh and you know what their visions are and stuff and mm-hmm. what they do so that's going to be hopefully in the next month be finished the mm-hmm. first part of it and then uh i'm going to probably try and approach pbs with it yeah and get that out there but it's it's nice. going to be really it's going to be really cool and it's reflective of this area yeah you know all of this is you know black yeah. and red is uh massachusetts you know oh, okay Massachusetts natives and stuff. Yeah. So, but will that be screened here in Rhode Island? Any? Do you have? I think it's going to be screened in okay. Rhode Island after good. too. Yeah. Good. Good. You know, yeah. I, I see it as going to it's going to be a good piece because it talks about what a lot of people don't want to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, and you'll see a lot of emotion in it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's like it's going to be really interesting. Mm-hmm. It's a thirty minute film. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the other one's going to be longer. You yeah. know going to be longer and i've i've reached all the way up to uh vermont Mm -hmm. for people that are in that one and around here and stuff uh Mm -hmm. different tribal people so Mm -hmm. i'm working on that i'm going broke but i'm (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly so buy some records yeah i mean everything's my own money so it's (laughs) like (laughs) yeah yeah it's a vision i had you know yeah i mean the truth always the truth needs to come out Mm -hmm. you know and the real, real stuff, because a lot, you know, a lot of times you just see, you know, the everyday. Uh, you yeah. know, what we want to see. I think people would really want to see yeah. some of that deep search stuff mm-hmm. that people just don't know about and don't talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, kind of that's what I wanted to to portray. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then you know, of course, we do other stuff too. Like, you know, we had a few clients um, that we did some. We made some MIDI music for they. They couldn't actually get the music that they wanted. Okay. One guy had a. He was doing a documentary and he was looking for, eighteen hundreds old style music. Yeah. You know, very odd to get. And I mean, and then yeah, I mean, it was, yeah exactly. And then, yeah, and it's, <laughs> and it's like, like nope, and then yeah. you know the licensing and everything is expensive. So, you know, he came to me and I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll make one song if you like it. I'll make you the whole soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And so I played it for him, and he's like, hey, that's pretty cool, Daryl, <laughs> you know? And so Br- myself and Brittany, we, you know, we spent some time that. and recreated the wow. sounds, you know? Cool. And, uh, you know, he's got himself a soundtrack now for yeah. something that he didn't have, and he doesn't have to license it or anything, yeah. so it's going to be good for him. So that's kind of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like that the best. I, like, I actually like audio work the best. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I, I love music, so it's like I love creating stuff like that. I mean, I got some stuff that I was just working on, you know, yeah, sounds and stuff like that. And, you know, we're good at commercials, you know, uh, radio commercials and stuff like that. We can do, you know, sweepers. and Okay, yeah, yeah some people can reach out to you for Yeah, yeah, we stuff. can do all kinds of stuff like that, you nice. know. Nice. And, in, you know, interviews, if somebody wants to preserve, you know, their grandparents, what they you know, 
there to talk about yeah, their history. Like a, I mean, we can, history. Yeah, yeah, we can go over there and, you know, do a, a little personal thing for them, you know. Mm-hmm. So as we're not, we're not here to make a million dollars. We're here to get, you know, mm-hmm. the truth, the real stuff out there and, you know, make people feel good, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Because I'm retired, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, Brittany's young, so she's, you know, She's the fire in this operation <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's great. It's, it's great, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, my wife supports me in doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, doesn't get mad at me when I come home late once in a while. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It's all, all consuming. Yeah, yeah. These creative things, yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's creative now. Every, everything's creative for me. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I love it. Awesome. I love it. And I loved I loved doing PVD. That was like, mm-hmm. you know, that was great. And, you know, I, I thank them, both of the mayors, for yeah. allowing me, you know, I mean, I, got, I had a great, they gave me a great budget to do it. And I mean, yeah. it was, it was great. Yeah. If you like to see a lot of different, you know, bands and stuff yeah. like that, all in one place, you mm-hmm. know, it's like one right after the other. Yep. Uh, all different type, you know. We had African, we had we had Indian music, you know, mm-hmm. uh, West Indian music come in and do their. I had a dancer; she did sword dances. I mean, wow, yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> that's some great show. And then I had I brought in. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Lee Mangano. He, he used to yeah. be. Uh, he did the uh, the song for uh, the Transformers, Instruments of Destruction. Oh, okay. And so Lee came in with his kids, and we had a, we probably had about 50 people on a drum duel, <laughs> and it was just sick. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so it was us, him, yeah. all the kids. He brought in Joe, uh, Joe Petricelli from the uh, Joe Perry Project. Yeah, okay. He was drumming with us. Yeah. I mean, you know, we had all these people that were like legends, yeah. Kenny, you know, Kenny Lyons, uh, yeah. Mary yeah. Lee, uh, yeah. you know, Ed Sweeney, uh, you know, all great people and stuff. And like, you know, Ed, I did a, I did a piece with him uh, last year on his new album. Okay. Um, I can't think of the name of the song, The Lone Prairie. It was an old cowboy western sound. And, yeah. you know, I was in the background doing the drumming for him, you know, to yeah. give it that that feel, you know, yeah. and stuff. And uh, I, I, I love the song. I heard it so much because we were playing it. I, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. got to love that song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, I've been blessed. Yeah. No, I love hearing how much you just like genuinely enjoy this stuff. And just, I, I really know, do. Get... I have a passion that for it, great. you know, and it's like, I think it keeps me going, mm-hmm. you know. And I'll probably be doing it until I, you know, Till I meet the maker, you Please know. Do. Please do. As yeah. long as I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you've talked about Newport Folk Fest. Uh, when else, like, where else can people see you? Like, I know that usually, like, summertime is a good time. To, yeah, to, yeah. To Actually, like, um, people see you? Next and week I, we'll be at the Pedestrian Bridge. Um, okay. PVD World Music. You know Chance? I do know Chance. I love Chance. So we're going to yeah. play for him um, six to eight. Uh, on the uh, bridge next week. What day is that? That's, um, I believe it's a Thursday. Okay. Yeah, Thursday night. You know, he does those Thursday night yeah, shows. Yeah, okay, yep. And then um, we're also playing for him at the Steel Yard May 18th. Okay. I don't know what's going on there, but I love the Steel Yard. So, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> we played nice. there before, so nice. that's a that's a cool venue. Yeah. Um, we may be at Mystic Seaport. I'm actually, I haven't confirmed it yet, but they reached out to me. Yep. We always play there. Yeah. That's more of an educational piece for us. Yep. And stuff, and interactive. We mm-hmm. actually get the kids up dancing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So those, those I, I love those shows. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, and is there's a powwow that you're... Uh, we're working, my tribe's actually working on a powwow. We're just waiting for... Uh, the city to clear it with the permit. It's going to be in Woonsocket. Okay. Uh, June 30th, if everything goes well. I, I can't confirm it yet because, you know, I had to go through the city council. It was a last minute thing. But um, if it does, it's going to be June 30th at River Island Park. Oh. It'll be a reincarnation of the big drum powwow that used to be in Providence. But That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll be there we'll playing. We'll make sure that. Yeah. 
Well, I'll make some calls. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if, that, if that gets turned down. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I yeah. mean, we've done it there before, and we were yes. always good stewards. I mm -hmm. had people cleaning up the park out yeah. of my tribe before we left. And, yeah. You know. Let's, let's just say that that's going to happen. So June 3rd. Yeah, I think I'm park. pretty sure yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be, you know, it's a good, Woonsocket's great because it's free parking. Yeah. We got two municipal lots. There's one yeah. across the street. And then there's one up top of the hill, and yeah. then there's parking around the park, all down, yeah. you know, Burden Street. You can park on both sides of the road by the Blackstone yeah. River. Yeah, great location. And for those that may not be familiar with that, uh, can you talk about what they can expect at a powwow? Because, I mean, it's open to everyone, Yeah, correct? it's open to everybody. Um, you know, so if you want to come and check out yep, this. this you want to come right? and check it out, you'll see um, we'll have vendors there and uh, mm -hmm. selling different Native American crafts storytellers mm -hmm. uh, that'll be telling stories throughout the day. There'll be some kids activities. We have a, we call it the uh, uh, Dental Association Dance. It's uh, <laughs> a candy dance where we throw out candy for the kids and they, <laughs> they go out and dance and pick it up. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll see some exhibition dances where, you know, we'll have dancers that come in and do a specific dance, you mm -hmm. know, uh, that people can really watch and enjoy. And stuff, and of course, there'll be you know drums drumming away, and people can go out in in the circle and dance, you mm -hmm. know, and just enjoy themselves. You mm -hmm. know, that's pretty much what the powwow's based for. There'll be somebody there selling, you know, Native American food as well, and uh, yeah, yeah, and that's a beautiful park. Yeah. River. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's so. a beautiful, it's underutilized. Yeah. You know, and they also have Levitt Amp, their music series. Levitt Amp, yeah. Summer, and we but, play there too, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, um, it's great to see that there's going to be some more programming there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if it works out, we'll do it every year there. Perfect. Keep it yeah. rolling. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and where can people find out more info or, you know, follow you or, you know, uh, anything like that of uh, support? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Picasso uh, Wampanoag Tribe of the Poconoke Nation is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, Black Eagle Productions is on Facebook. And also I have a page for the New England Indians, the film that I'm doing. And, you know, if you want to just hit me up. Mm -hmm. Daryl Black Eagle Javison on Facebook. That's the best yeah. way, best way to get me Instagram as well. I'm on Instagram, but Facebook, cool. uh, you know, you can leave me a message and I'll get in touch with you. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Uh, what would you say is your greatest musical accomplishment to this point? I would say that, um, the, uh, daybreak song. Yeah is one of my greatest ones because just because of the, the fact of the language preservation, um, you know, intermingling with, uh, one of our elder tribal people coming in there. Um, that's one of my favorite, one mm -hmm. of my favorite songs. Um, uh, although there's a new one coming that I actually wrote for my cousin who passed away. He was the war chief of the, uh, Abenaki tribe up in New Hampshire is also on uh, the Commission of Indian Affairs in New Hampshire, and he was a Green Beret in Vietnam. Wow. He died of COVID. Wow. That's... Yeah. And so I wrote this song. Yeah. I wrote this song for him, you know, and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to bring that song out mm -hmm. now. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a special song. And, uh, I can imagine, yeah. yeah, it's time for me to, and that'll be really soon. Is that hopefully? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully I'll definitely be playing it this mm -hmm. summer mm -hmm. at some of our shows for sure. The traditional shows, mm -hmm. but, um, it's, it, that's a medicine song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And then of course, you know, I, I, I love the song that I did with Mary Lee. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, you probably look on my page, I just actually put it up when we were practicing the song at Mill Race. Oh, okay. In yeah, Woonsocket. Yeah. And Kenny was still alive then, too. Yeah. And uh, it's actually on my page kind of like as a memorial to Mary Lee when I found out that she passed the other day. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's, there's just no words for that. She's just, and I just, we just saw her. Mm-hmm. She she did the um, 
the Ross Common Souls at the PPAC in March. Yeah. And I was there. It was a lunchtime show. And I, I shot from here over to there to see it. And mm -hmm. that's the last time that I saw her. You know, so, yeah. Yeah, she was amazing. She was. Yeah. She was. I'm grateful I got to, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like there's just yeah. some people that you just, you're never going to forget, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of it was all because of Russ. You okay, know? yeah. Yeah, I approached Russ one day and I asked him about drumming, you know. And we just became the best of friends. And because of him, I met all these beautiful people mm -hmm. that I didn't know, you mm -hmm. know. So he really brought a lot of a lot of goodness, and he became a good friend. Mm -hmm. The musical accomplishments of just who you can meet and the connections that you can have and make, and you yeah. know, I look at that stuff too of just knowing that I would not have this connection to another person if it wasn't for music. So like exactly. when you get to that point, it's like, yeah, I mean, school, get to play these big shows or do these other um you know, exciting things, not yeah. to diminish them, but just like when it comes down to it, it's like, I'm just, you know, grateful that I get to, to play music with some amazing people that I, or, and hang around with people I would never meet. Exactly. If it wasn't for playing music, so. That's how I feel. That's you know great. what I mean? It's like, you know, all these wonderful people, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I'm sitting here watching people clog on a, you yeah. know, on a dance floor and stuff, and it's like, you know, Kevin Doyle. Yeah. Guy's amazing. You how, know? Does he, how does he do that? Yeah. <laughs> this is, how do his legs His wife's like native. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. She's from our nation, you know? So it's like the world is small. Yeah. I've never met her, but I'll yeah. oh, just get to see Kevin. Beautiful but, person. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Beautiful person. All good people. Yeah. You know? I'm just blessed to have mm -hmm. met them all, you mm -hmm. know, and done the things. Like I said, who, you know? You ever hear of a, a native drum playing at Patrick's Pub? I mean, that's like, nope, I've heard of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Black Eagle, this has been uh, really wonderful. I'm, I'm so excited that we got to sit down and, and talk and get to share, um, share the story with folks. So thank yeah. you so much for your time. You're welcome. My pleasure. Anytime, my brother. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm not the one.